Welcome to the session on uh, food import clearance system. The uh, import clearance system of FSSCI is a single window integrated web based system for the process of clearance of imported food into India. And as you all know, the import of food products into the country is being monitored by FSSCI at the various port locations. And uh, FSSCI has published various rules, regulations and notifications which we have to follow both as an authorized officer and as an importer while food importing the food products into the country. If the food products are not as per the FSSCI regulations, the consignment will either be, re will be rejected and will not be allowed for clearance into the country. Now, the process of importing food products into India has, uh, can be broadly categorized into four steps, that wherein the importer or the uh, custom house agent or the custom broker will apply for clearance of the consignment once it lands at a particular port. And this application for clearance is initially submitted in the uh, customs online uh, portal, that is the ICE gate, and where the RMS or the risk-based man risk management system is integrated. And once the... Uh, uh, consignment related information is uh, filed at the ICE gate, the bill of entry is generated and the message regarding the bill of entry is then forwarded to FSSA through the single window uh, uh, integrated platform for clearance on the food import clearance system or FICS of FSSA. As you all know, the single window platform is an integrated web based platform uh, implemented by the CBEC or the Central Board of Excise and Customs for and wherein all the participating government agencies are brought on a single plat platform for the uh, both the export uh, uh, clearance as well as the import clearance process. Once the uh, bill of entry is filed and the message is transmitted to uh, through the single window to the FICS of FSSCI, the uh, process of uh, FI FSSI clearance starts. That is the initially the uh, your application and the document submitted by the uh, importer or the CHA in the FICS is verified, the documents are scrutinized and then subsequently once the application is accepted, it, uh, the process of uh, visual inspection and the sampling of the uh, consignment is done. And uh, post that, the samples drawn up are sent to the laboratories for analysis and based on the laboratory report, uh, uh, the food pro the consignment, the food product or the food consignment is either uh, considered for clearance into the country or issued a rejection report. Now, the, uh, to talk about FICS, the uh, food import clearance system, this online system facilitates the following process. That is the registration of the online registration of the custom house agent and the importer and uh, the online, the CHA or the uh, importer for, has to first register in the uh, online portal of FSSCI, that is the food import clearance system. And the CHA register, once the CHA registers, the CHA registration has to, will be approved by the authorized officer of the concerned port. Post that a login, a lo your login credentials are issued to the custom house agent. And uh, once they receive the login credentials, the CHA can uh, file, uh, login with their user ID password and proceed for submission of the application in the on online FICS. Uh, the application and the documents have to be up, uh, uploaded in the, uh, submitted in the online portal and which is subsequently verified by the authorized officer and the, uh, once the application is accepted, the uh, payment of the requisite fees, that is for visual inspection and the sampling fees has to be made by the CHA and the, or the importer and uh, the application then proceeds to the inspection and the sampling stage. And uh, once at the inspection and the sampling stage, the authorized officer will assign the inspection uh, uh, the, uh, to carry out the inspection. The uh, application is assigned to the uh, FSSI technical I mean, inspectors. Assigned applications then moves into the uh, FSSI inspectors bin in the uh, online portal. And uh, the assigned inspections uh, has to be acknowledged by the CHA in the FICS. And then uh, they have to facilitate the uh, visual inspection of the consignment at the concerned uh, port location or the container flight stations or the CFS locations. And uh, once the physical inspection and the collection of sample is uh, completed, the uh, uh, recording of the visual inspection is also facilitated in the online uh, portal and uh, the up, uh, updation of the visual inspection report happens. And also there is a provision that is issued for certain specific cases where FSSA has given provisions for issuance of provisional and no, no objection certificates that also is facilitated in the uh, FICS. And once the uh, uh, inspections are updated in the online system, the uh, system selects the laboratory for the particular sample uh, with uh, ID to which the uh, 
sample has to be forwarded and uh, uh, based on the lab selected by the online system, the samples are dispatched, have to be dispatched by the authorized officer to the concerned labs. And in the online portal, again, the laboratory has also been provi uh, provided the provisions for reporting of the analytical results and uh, the test reports have to be, up uh, parameters have to be updated and the test results have to be updated in the online system by the concerned laboratories. And based on the test results updated by the laboratory, there is an auto generation of the no objection certificates or the non-conformance certificate happens in the online system. Now, this is a typical flowchart for of the FICS process, wherein you can see that Initially, the uh, application is filed by the as, uh, importer or the CHA, which then proceeds to the scrutiny stage. And then scrutiny is completed, the documents are accepted, then it proceeds to the payment stage. Once the payment is completed, it moves to the visual inspection stage where uh, the consignments are visually inspected. And uh, if uh, found fit for sample, uh, drawing of samples, samples are drawn. and then the drawn samples are forwarded to the laboratory for testing. And once the lab, uh, lab updates the test result, test analyzes the sample, updates the test results, and uh, is uh, issues a test report in the online, and then the online generation of the NOC or the non-conformance report as, it is, uh, as applicable happens in the online system. And in case of NOC, uh, if uh, no objection certificate is issued for a consignment in the online system, the counter sample is, uh, has to be returned back. As per the FSS import regulation that you, uh, you might have come across, the second sample that is drawn has to be returned back to the applicant uh, through the system. So provision is already provided, also provided in the uh, food import clearance system for returning this counter samples to the applicant. In case of a non-conformance certificate, the importer has give, been given a provision in the import regulation, the FSS import regulation, that the counter sample can be sent to the referral laboratory for retesting. So for this also a provision is given for, for the importer or the CHA to apply in the online for the retest and uh, based on the re uh, uh, same uh, similar procedure like a uh, first notified laboratory follows in the online system, the referral laboratory also updates the test reports for the retest sample in the online and generation of the no objection certificate or the uh, rejection report is done by the authorized officer in the online portal. In FICS, the uh, in uh, online uh, system, the application is initially either initiated by the uh, CHA or the importer or a partial application as I had referred to in the previous uh, slides. The message that is received from the single window, partial me uh, message regard, uh, regarding the bill of entry or the consignment that is received from the customs through the single window is subsequently processed by the CHA or the importer. Now we'll have, look, have a look in detail about the FICS, the food import clearance system process that is happening and how the uh, online portal working and, uh, and its working looks like. Before that, let, uh, who are the stakeholders involved in the process? And who are all the stakeholders integrated into the system? The first is the authorized officer, the authorized of the, of officers of the concerned port locations, then the uh, technical officers or the uh, rep uh, referred to as the uh, rep representatives of the authorized officer, the, uh, uh, officer as in the import regulation, then the uh, custom house agent or the custom brokers, importers, the laboratories, the concerned notified laboratories and the referral laboratories and the FSSA HQ. FSSA HQ will be able to monitor the activities of all the other stakeholders in the online system using their log login credentials. So these are the stakeholders of uh, the uh, involved in the food import clearance process of FSSAI. Now this is how the uh, online homepage of the uh, FICS looks like, where uh, every authorized officer is issued a username and password by the uh, FSSA uh, Imports Division or FSSA Headquarters New Delhi. And authorized officers have to use this use login credentials to log into the portal. And also additionally, as we had uh, made a mention that the custom house agent and the importer has to initially register in the FIC, uh, FICS. So there is a provision that is also given for uh, the custom house agent to sign up or to register, that is uh, in, uh, to register their license in the FICS and for the importer to register the IEC in the FICS. So they initially have to register in FICS and subsequently it will be approved by the authorized officer or the HQ and they will be issued a login credential. The login credential for authorized officers are issued by the FSSA Imports Division or the headquarters. Now this is the flow process as we had briefly explained, now this is in bit in detail. Now. Uh, the prior to the uh, 
bill of entry message that is being received in FICS, the filing of bill of entry happens uh, at the ICE gate, the customs ICE gate, based on the HS, the HS, uh, HS code uh, of the commodity. Uh, the HS codes are mapped uh, uh, based on the food related HS codes. The related uh, products are mapped onto the FICS system and uh, the application of the risk management system also happens in the uh, customs ICE gate based on the HS code. So once a bill of entry is filed and based on the HS code and the RMS uh, selection in the ice gate system, the selected bill of entry, that is the bill of entry that is marked for FSSI clearance by the customs RMS system is uh, uh, the uh, 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 message regarding these bill of entries are transmitted to the FICS, the food import clearance system of FSSA. So what we get actually in the FICS is only the selected bills which require, which the custom system, RMS system has mandated that an FSSA NOC is required. So only for those consignments, the uh, the message related to only those consignments are received in the uh, F, uh, FICS of FSSA. So once uh, the message comes uh, into the FICS, the authorized officer has to accept these uh, information um, uh, related uh, message in, uh, information either based on the HS code again and the product description the authorized of officer accepts the bill of entry message and from there then it once the bill of entry message is accepted it, the message moves on to the uh, CHA login of the uh, in, uh, CHA login in, of, in FICS. So uh, the bill of entry message that is received from the customs ice scheme is accepted by the concerned authorized officer and uh, the related message is then transmitted to the uh, online uh, customs uh, house agent login and wherein uh, then they will be able to submit the application and the requisite documents for that partic uh, particular bill of entry or the consignment. And once the uh, docu application and the documents are submitted, the uh, application uh, in FICS is com com comes back again to the AO, AO lo authorized officer's login, wherein the scrutiny of the application is done by the authorized officer. Once the scrutiny, document scrutiny is completed uh, by the concerned authorized officer, uh, if there is any clarification or any further documentation that is required, the authorized officer can send back the application back to the custom house agent or the, uh, or the importer seeking the uh, additional information or if there is any correction that has to be done in the application. So uh, once the, uh, it again moves to the uh, CHA or the importer has been and uh, they will have to uh, uh, complete the uh, corrections that has been uh, told to uh, be uh, done or the clarification any additional documents that is required have to be uploaded and again by the CHA or the importer in the online and then resubmit the application. Once the application then again comes back, the clarified application then again comes back to the uh, authorized officer and it will be again re-verified and uh, if everything is in order then application then moves to the next stage of the visual inspection. So the, that is a scrutiny process involves uh, the verification of the documents in the application by the authorized officer seeking clarification if any and then post uh, uh, verification the documents are, or the application is accepted by the authorized officer for further process. If there is any uh, or any uh, uh, com consignment wherein the products are, do not come under the purview of FSSA. There could be some uh, uh, consignments where the uh, products might be of dual use, wherein which may be related to food and uh, as well as to, uh, it could be of non-food use. So in such cases, the uh, during the scrutiny of the documents, the authorized officer verifies the end use declaration of the importer and the relevant supporting documents. And based on the end use declaration, and if it is established that the consignment is not for food use, then the authorized officer can, will uh, has a provision to issue a not out of scope or the not in scope report at the scrutiny sta uh, sta uh, stage itself. So it, I, these applications uh, um, do not go, uh, are not proceeded for, uh, further for the inspection and sampling. So here the out of scope rep uh, report that is issued, uh, the message regarding this go is again transmitted back to FICS based on which the importer or the CHA can take the clearance or requisite clearance from the customs. If the consignment requires further inspection and sampling and it, it, it is uh, required that the consignment has to be visually inspected, samples are to be drawn and forwarded to the laboratory, the, those applications or those consignments are accepted for further process. Now in the uh, next stage of the visual inspection uh, uh, or the uh, sample uh, drawing stage, uh, at this 
once the application is accepted, as uh, we have uh, shown you in the previous uh, slides also, it goes to the application, moves on to the on payment of fees to the CHA bill, wherein uh, the CHA or the importer has to uh, make an online payment for the, uh, the required amount uh, towards visual inspection and sample analysis. So the application then uh, uh, is, will be there in the CHA bill for uh, making the requisite payment. And once the CHA makes the payment, uh, uh, and the, amo the amount that has to be paid is also visible to the CHA depending on the number of samples that has to be drawn, the amount will be displayed in the CHA bill. And after the uh, payment is made, the application is again transmitted back to the AO uh, bill and AO further proceeds for the uh, ex uh, uh, assigning the inspection for inspection or and sampling. So here, uh, once the authorized officer assigns inspection, uh, authorized officer can assign in inspection to the uh, FSSI inspector, the technical officers who are the representatives of the authorized officer and the application so assigned will move to the concerned office uh, inspectors or the technical officers bin. And in, once it is in the technical officers bin, the uh, uh, and also uh, at this stage, uh, not before prior to movement into the technical officers bin, the uh, custom house agent or the broker uh, or the custom broker has to uh, assign, assign the time uh, uh, that has been given for inspection by the authorized officer, has to uh, uh, acknowledge the inspection timing that has been given and uh, whether it is, if it is convenient for them, whether the timing or the date and timing that has been selected and given by the authorized officer is convenient for the CHA, then they have to acknowledge the inspection. The acknowledged inspection details is recorded, uh, uh, recorded and then it goes into the uh, technical officer's bin. So uh, once in the technical officer's bin, the, uh, 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 the sample ID, technical officer or the FSSI inspector has to uh, generate the sample ID and uh, then proceed for the visual inspection. After the visual inspection, the visual inspection reports are updated by the technical officer and or the FSI inspector in the online portal. And uh, based, uh, based on whether the visual inspection, whether the consignment is, was fit for sampling, then uh, the samples are, uh, move, uh, are forwarded to the lab or moves on to the lab forwarding stage. In case there is any discrepancy that has been observed during the visual inspection, that is if there are uh, any uh, non-conformities in the physical condition of the product or any non-conformity in the labeling of the product. So uh, the technical officer or the FSI inspector will update the discrepancies that has been observed in the consignment during inspection and then that will proceed for a gen, uh, for a, a generation of a rejection report in case if it is required. For generation of a rejection report is uh, to the AO bin after a suitable verification by the authorized officer. So uh, once the application is accepted, uh, the uh, uh, sample that is uh, con uh, consignment is accepted for sampling and sample is drawn by the in uh, concerned uh, inspecting officer and it is moved to that sample forwarding stage the samples will uh, will be forwarded the forwarded to the uh, lab that has been selected by the online system and uh, the uh, message regarding the particular sample id moves into the laboratory bin so the uh, sample forwarding has happened in the online the physical uh, uh, sample is handed over has to be handed over to the laboratory representative the sample information is forwarded in the online and which has to be uh, which will be acknowledged by the laboratory in their bin at the subsequent stages. So once the sample message is received by the lab in their bin, they have to acknowledge the uh, receipt of the sample and, and they acknowledge the receipt once they receive the physical sample also in hand, they acknowledge the receipt in the online and the uh, uh, process of lab analysis or the lab testing uh, starts. And once the lab has completed the lab analysis, the, they update all the test parameters in the online and then it goes for the updation of the test result and based on the test result, whether once the, whether the lab is updating the uh, conformance uh, report or a non-conformance report, whether the test is a pass or a test, based on the test, the consignment has failed, based on that the NOC or the NCC is generated. And it, it is an auto-generation of NOC and NCC that happens in the FICS. 
and once this NOC or NOC is generated, the release order message goes from the uh, FICS to the customs ISB. So a return message goes back. So initially we received a BE message. After all this process that has happened in the FICS, a return message regarding whether FSCI is, uh, will, release, uh, uh, will release a consignment or not, or whether FSCI is issuing an NOC, has issued an NOC or an in, in NCC, goes back to the customs ISB. So based on the release order, the customs uh, will take the uh, subsequent, uh, uh, do the subsequent clearance of the consignment. And if there is a rejection report, the uh, rejection, uh, the uh, rejection details are updated in the or the rejection message goes to the customs portal, customs eyes gate. These are the screenshots of the uh, AO login. This is how the uh, authorized officers dashboard looks like in the uh, FICS system. So here, uh, the authorized officer will be able to will uh, uh, be able to have a consolidated information on the total number of applications that has been received on a day, and total number of applications that has been uh, that is there for processing. Then, how many applications are uh, uh, pending for? Uh, uh, scrutiny, how many applications have been clarified and then as further uh, pending for scrutiny, how many applications have been, uh, are, uh, have, uh, for which payment has been received and is pending for inspection. So all these informations are will be available in the dashboard of the authorized officer. We received the bill of entry message from the uh, customs ice gate to the, in the online FICS. This is how we receive the bill of entry message from the uh, uh, customs ice gate. Uh, on a, uh, on a day, the uh, bill of entries that has been uh, uh, filed at the ice gate has passed through the RMS system of uh, customs ice gate and has been marked for FSSA clearance. The message regarding this uh, will be transmitted to uh, FICS and once it comes over here, the message that is received in FICS will look like this and here AO has to uh, uh, can verify the uh, details of the product, the basic details of the consignment will be visible to the AO in this uh, page like the port, uh, port location, the bill of entry number and the bill of entry date and date on which it has been received in FICS, what is the HS code and what is the product description. And here based on the product descriptions, again AO can, uh, uh, will have to accept or have to reject the application. Rege uh, once the AO uh, on the preliminary verification from this page, if the AO is uh, accepting the uh, bill of entry, this message again then goes to the uh, FICS bin of the custom house agent. So here, if based on the description, based on the product description, if uh, the authorized officer finds that the, bill, uh, the particular product commodity, although it might be a related HS code, but particular commodity is not related to food, AO has a provision of rejecting or uh, giving a not in scope message, not in scope uh, uh, message here. And this message again trans gets transmitted back to the ice gate from this at the, from this point itself. So that here, if the only if the bill of entry uh, uh, which is re requires a mandatory inspection and sampling will proceed to the subsequent stages, those bill of entries which don't require an FSSA clearance can uh, will be issued a not in scope report at this point itself and uh, based on the outer scope report that has been uh, given by FSSA, subsequent clearance can be taken by, uh, by the importer on the CHA. Now once this uh, bill of entry message is accepted, the message is trans uh, forwarded to the uh, FICS bin of the CHA, the custom house agent. This is how the uh, uh, FICS bin of uh, or the dashboard of the custom house agent looks like. And here also you can, they'll be able to ha have a summary of all the pending applications, how many applications has been uh, received for uh, which they have filed and which they ha have to submit an FSC application. This will be uh, visible here under to uh, new NOC applications. And then how many applications which they have completed and then which is pending for payment at their stage for payment of the visual inspection or the sample analysis that is that is also that will also be uh, uh, viewable from here. Then if there is any application that has been uh, sent back to the uh, import um, uh, the custom house agent seeking clarification or corrections by the authorized officer they have to uh, they'll, they'll be able to view it from here. And once the uh, bill of entry or the uh, for a particular consignment for which the, uh, the authorized, authorized officer has forwarded to the custom house agent or the importer for submitting an application, the importer or CHA has to uh, initiate the application process. So this is how the application for a particular bill of entry looks like, the online application looks like. 
wherein the application in the uh, online uh, portal the C, uh, CHA has to fill in the details some of the details as we said as we said uh, is all will already be uh, re partially received from if it is a link uh, single window linked bill some of the details will already be uh, received will have already been received from the customized gate so the rest of the informations have to be filled by the ch custom house agent in this application now once the basic details of the consignment and its products are filled in then they have to upload the required mandatory documents or the documents as applicable for the consignment some of the, the mandatory documents are the dgft license that is the import export code then the fssa license as uh, you all know that uh, for importing of any food product into the country a food business operator or an importer should have an fssa license under the kind of business importer so the uh, cha or the importer has to upload the copy of the valid fssa license this is one of the mandatory document and then the country of origin certificate of the consignment these three are the mandatory documents without which the application will not uh, without uploading these applications or updating this application uh, these documents the application will not move forward then uh, depending on the consignment the mandate uh, some of the documents which are applicable for that particular consignment like it could be the uh, 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 phytosanitary certificate uh, for a certain commodity primary commodities uh, which require a phytosanitary certificate from the exporting country then uh, in case the any product approval has been obtained by the importer for that uh, particular product the copy of the product approval issued by fssci then uh, any high uh, if it was a high c sale consignment some, uh, uh, that has uh, for which the bill of entry has been filed the copy of the high c sale agreement these inf these documents also have to be uploaded relevant to the consignment now once the cha submits the application the information all these uh, in, uh, details of the uh, uh, particular concerned application comes back to the authorized officers bill uh, once the CHA files an application, a typical application ID is generated, uh, which is called the consignment ID, and every bill of every application will have a unique uh, consignment ID. This can uh, uh, the application is the can uh, is tracked can uh, tracked by the authorized officer in the uh, FICS uh, portal through, through using this unique ID that is a consignment ID. So this. Uh, uh, Information regarding the uh, uh, the uh, consignment as filed by the CHA and along with the supporting documents, all these uh, details are will come back to the authorized officer's bin, where now the authorized officer has to uh, verify this application, see whether all the information filled in by the import uh, the CHA or the importer are. Uh, uh, correct or if there is any additional information that is required or if all the documents that have been upload uploaded are. Uh, uh, have been uploaded or if there is any additional uh, uh, documents that is required or any clarification that is required for all these the authorized officer will have to verify each of these applications. So once the application is verified this is how the application uh, looks like the application in, uh, submitted by the uh, importer or the CHA and once it has come to the authorized officer this is how the authorized officer will be able to view the application. So here we'll have all the basic details of the custom house agent, the basic details of the consignment for which the bill of entry has been filed. Then the product information, what are all the products for which the bill of entry has been filed? What are all the products in the consignment for which the bill of entry has been filed? So uh, these uh, will be visible here as well as some of the documents that uh, the documents that have been uploaded. For example, the end use declaration that has been uploaded. Uh, 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 submitted by the uh, importer for this particular application, then the specimen copy of label, the certificate of analysis if it has been uploaded, it will be visible over here which the authorized officer will be able to view and verify. And once this is verified, if authorized officer has to send the application for clarification, there are options given uh, which authorized officer can choose. where. Uh, authorized officer can if any clarification is required can choose the option as send for clarification and then uh, type the uh, uh, required inf uh, information that is uh, needed from the uh, additional information that is required from the importer or the CHA and these inf or the corrections that has to be done can be given in the remark column and then submitted and then the application goes to the CHA bin. If there are no discrepancies in the application everything is in order the authorized officer can accept the application at this stage and then it will to, uh, uh, move it to the payment stage. 
if there is uh, if during scrutiny as we had uh, mentioned earlier also if during scrutiny of the applications we uh, the authorized officer finds that uh, comes to a conclusion that the product in the consignment does not come under the purview of FSSCI so here also we have a provision of issuing a not in scope report so here the authorized officer will select the scrutiny remark as not in scope so that it, the application then proceeds directly to the uh, generation of an out of scope report in case uh, the application there is any uh, uh, d uh, discrepancy in the application or the product in the consignment whereby the application is not going to be accepted further for any uh, clarif uh, not, no clarification is required or no uh, will not be accepted further for inspection and sampling then authorized officer ca is, uh, has the option for selecting the scrutiny remark as reject and then the application uh, the uh, application then moves into the generation uh, of rejection report stage. So here, uh, based on the scrutiny uh, and the observations of the, of the authorized officer, the uh, uh, authorized officer can either send back the application for clarification, can accept the application for the subsequent process, can uh, or can uh, uh, issue a not in scope or the out of scope report or can even reject the application. We said the application is uh, has, uh, sent to the CHA for clarification. So this is how in the CHA bin the application will be, uh, uh, once the application moves back to the CHA bin uh, for uh, uh, submitting the clarification, uh, this is where it will lie. It will uh, it will come under the list of applications for clarification. And here the uh, CHA has to uh, again uh, uh, open this application and see what are the uh, clarifications that has been sought by the authorized officer, the correction that has been sought and then submit the corrections that is required. So once it, any all any corrections are done, they uh, the CHA has will be given a provision to resubmit the application with the required uh, corrections or clarifications. The application then again routed back to the authorized officer's bin further again for further verification and uh, application clarified by uh, the CHR importer comes back to the CH, uh, the authorized officer's bin under the list of uh, NOC applications clarified by the applicant. So here again it will be re-verified if everything is in order either uh, if it has to be uh, proceed for the next process of visual inspection and payment the authorized officer will accept the application or if anything if there is any issue here or whether we have to issue an out of scope report that also all any of the process can be done at this stage also by the authorized officer. So application found an order this, uh, it is being accepted for further inspection and sampling so the authorized officer will accept the application and this uh, in the online system it uh, it, the number of samples that has to be drawn will also be shown for each of the product uh, uh, line that is there in the application and the authorized officer will accept the application. From here it mo uh, moves on again back to the CHA bin for the payment of the visual inspection and, or, and the uh, sample analysis charges. So here uh, at this stage the link for payment uh, will online payment will be visible for the uh, CHA and uh, they have to proceed for payment of the online uh, of the char requisite charges back once it is paid it comes to the uh, authorized officers uh, bin again for assigning of the visual inspections so here as we said authorized officer will assign the uh, in application to uh, to uh, the uh, inspecting officer and uh, can select the uh, date and time uh, where, where uh, to uh, inform to inform the cha at on which date and at which point of time or which during which time the uh, FSA is, uh, 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 is uh, going to inspect the consignment. The date and time and uh, will be uh, selected and will be uh, the application will be assigned for inspection and this application once it is assigned for inspection uh, it moves to the uh, one part it moves to the custom house agent to accept the date and time of inspection that has been assigned by the authorized officer and once the inspection appointment is accepted by the uh, CHA or uh, it, uh, the uh, application details comes to the inspecting officer's bin. So in the inspecting officer's bin uh, the, uh, all the author, uh, applications that has been assigned by the authorized officer for inspection on a particular day will be visible here with uh, the uh, typical with the uh, unique consignment ID the port location, the uh, CFS location at which uh, uh, the inspecting officer has to uh, uh, visit and uh, inspect the consignment. Then 
uh, with the details of the products in the consignment. And uh, once the uh, message comes to the uh, visual, uh, to the uh, inspecting officer's bin, the uh, inspecting officer will uh, generate the unique sample ID for that particular for the products in that particular uh, application. And this is what the unique sample ID, which is uh, generated in the online, looks like. And uh, the sample the sample ID that is be uh, once it is generated, it is ready for uh, further. Pro uh, process that is for updation of the inspection report. The sample ID generated, it, uh, the uh, inspecting officer will be able to, uh, once ID is generated, they'll be able to take, uh, uh, will be able to take a printout of the sample label. This label is also, the sample label is also auto-generated in the online system and the sample label will have the unique sample ID that has been uh, generated by the online system for that particular uh, product in the consignment and then we'll also have the basic information that might be required by the lab as well as for the uh, basic information that is required for the counter sample label. Now, after the inspection has been done, the physical verification of the consignment is done, the uh, inspecting officer has to update the uh, inspection details in the online system. So, uh, once the inspecting officer uh, uh, verifies the consignment and uh, then uh, the uh, application, as we said, uh, the sample ID has been generated and it is now at the visual inspection uh, stage in the uh, TO, uh, the tech, uh, inspecting officer's bin of FICS. There the, uh, uh, the inspecting officer has to update the details of the consignment, has to, uh, the condition of the consignment uh, at the time of uh, inspection, whether it was fit for sampling or not, if there is any discrepancy observed, that provision has been given to update those informations or uh, informations also here. And in case uh, there is any discrepancy, the uh, inspecting officer will uh, have to uh, will uh, select the particular uh, option from the drop down that is given in the FICS and either as a rectifiable discrepancy or a non rectifiable discrepancy and the details can be the required uh, photographic proof and the visual inspection report for uh, for, uh, for as proof for the discrepancy has to be updated by the inspecting officer in the online. If there is no discrepancy, the inspecting officer will update the uh, inspection status as no discrepancy observed and then the application then moves to the uh, forwarding of uh, uh, samples to the lab, to the stage at which they can forward the sample ID to the lab. Uh, once here, the dis uh, any dis uh, discrepancy if any observed and is recorded by the inspecting officer in the online, application then again is routed back to the AO bin where the AO has uh, can again re-verify the discrepancy remarks that has been updated by the inspecting officer and uh, if AO is satisfied, the authorized officer is satisfied, the observations are correct and the uh, uh, there are discrepancies, uh, rec non-rectifiable discrepancies in the consignment for which and uh, because of which the consignment cannot be considered a clearance, AO has got, the authorized officer has got a provision to reject the consignment at visual inspection stage itself and uh, generate a rejection report as a, as a visual inspection rejection report. Once the sample ID has been uh, uh, moved to the laboratory forwarding stage by the inspecting officer, uh, it, the auto, uh, auto selection of the lab happens for the particular sample ID and uh, the uh, sample ID will then uh, be uh, moved to the laboratory bin the FICS bin of the concerned laboratory to which the sam uh, system has selected that uh, the sample ID has uh, auto selection has happened and to which the system has selected uh, that the la sample has to be forwarded to. So this is how, this is the uh, stage at which it, uh, the applications are queued up in the uh, technical officers bin for forwarding to the laboratory. Uh, as you see the uh, uh, product description, then the mode of dispatch how uh, we, uh, the authorized officer is forwarding the samples to the laboratory, that also will be recorded in the online system. If the samples are being forwarded by courier mode to the laboratory, uh, uh, AO can choose as the mode of uh, dispatch as courier. If it is uh, handed over to the laboratory representative, then um, uh, the mode of dispatch can be selected as lab representative. Or if it is handed over by the authorized officer or his representative, that is uh, of FSSA directly to the lab, that, also, that option is also given. And so the mode of dispatch is also recorded in the online. And the test to be performed is uh, by the lab 
that can also be selected. If there is any additional test that the authorized officer has to, inst any information has to be given to the lab by the authorized officer regarding any additional test that has to be performed, that can also be uh, uh, recorded and under the, uh, uh, recorded either as under the using the option remark. And here as you see the lab name that is will come as an auto selection in the online system. So that this means that this particular sample of this particular sample ID has to be forwarded only to this lab or has to be uh, submitted only to this lab for the anal particular lab for analysis. Now here once the la sample I uh, details are updated, the uh, uh, inspecting officer submits the application in the online wherein whereby the uh, message regarding that particular sample ID is transmitted in FICS to the concerned laboratories bin. Now this is where the sample details appears in the laboratory bin. This is a dashboard of FICS dashboard of the laboratories, the notified laboratories. And here once the sample details are received uh, in the online FICS and the samples are received physically at the lab, the lab will ac acknowledge the receipt of the samples. So uh, once uh, they acknowledge each of the receipt of each of the sample, it moves on to the updation of the la la testing parameters. And uh, provision has also been given in the laboratory as an alert mechanism for the labs to uh, ensure that, that uh, the time taken is stream, uh, by the labs is streamlined, time taken by the labs is streamlined. So the provision is also alert mechanism is given in the online portal wherein the uh, labs will be able to uh, know that how, for how many days, uh, uh, for, for more than how many days the samples are pending in the lab then. And once the uh, sample ID moves on to the lab updation par, uh, stage, the uh, parameter updation stage, here they can proceed, open the particular sample IDs and then uh, proceed for updation of the test results. So here you will see that the identity of the sample, uh, the particular consignment is also uh, maintained here. So here at this, the lab receives only the message regarding this with the sample ID. There is no information regarding the consignment, the basic consignment or the, the bill of entry or the FICS consignment ID, no, no such information is transmitted to the lab. The lab receives only the information with regard to what is the product description, what is the uh, uh, the country of origin and this unique sample ID that has been generated in FICS. So every sample is coded with a unique sample ID and then it is this only this message regarding the sample ID is received in the lab along with the physical sample. So the identity of the consignment from the lab is also maintained here. Once uh, the uh, lab uh, completes a test uh, test or the analysis of the uh, of the respective samples, they will have to proceed for updating of the test parameters in the online FICS, online FICS portal. So for each sample ID, initially once they accept it, they will uh, enter the basic uh, uh, information. If any label is available, the labeling informations are entered in the online portal and then also the uh, type of packing in which they have received, the condition in which they have received the samples, these informations will be recorded and also they will be recording the uh, date on which on a uh, date on which they have uh, received the sample and the time of uh, the date on which the analysis has been completed and uh, uh, once that has been uh, done, they have to, the uh, tests uh, are, are completed. Uh, the opinion of the lab is given under the uh, option uh, remarks or opinion. So here the lab will update the opinion uh, based on which the outcome of the test result. And here the parameters that have uh, has been the uh, parameters that have been tested by the lab for a particular sample that is also recorded here. And uh, what is the uh, specification under the FSS regulations for that particular parameter? Uh, uh, what is these uh, for the particular parameters? What is the specification that is specified that is recorded? Then what is the method that has been used by the lab for testing these parameters that is mentioned over here? And the result, what they have obtained for analyzing that parameter? And what is the opinion, the remark or the opinion of the lab based on the analytical test result that they have obtained and comparison with the specification of that parameter that also is recorded. So all the parameters that are tested by the lab and reported in the analysis uh, report are uh, have to be will be first recorded by the lab in the online port in the uh, online portal. Once they complete 
they will be uh, submitting the analysis uh, result, the final opinion as whether the, based on the test result, whether the sample has, found, uh, uh, has been found to be conforming to the FSS specifications or not, the lab will update the test result as pass or fail. So here they have an option of uh, selecting as pass or fail and once that has been done, the online generation of the uh, no objection report or the no, if it is a conformance report or generation of the non-conformance report if it is a rejection, if it is a fail report. So this happens. Now these are the parameters, this is a screenshot of a page uh, wherein the lab has entered the parameters for a particular sample, what are the parameters that has been tested by the lab. Uh, each parameter, what is the FSS specification, then what is the method that has been used by the lab, what is the test result that they have obtained and whether this based on the uh, test result, whether their, their, their opinion is whether the uh, parameter is conforming to the specification or not. That is, that is uh, this is how they recorded the information. And this is the uh, lab report, once they have update the test result, the, uh, they will be able to generate a report uh, of all the uh, parameter uh, test uh, parameters in the test result, Gen the online generated report or an, uh, report uh, uh, the uh, lab report in form 2. This is, uh, will also be up uploaded by the lab in the online. So the soft copy of the report will be uploaded by the lab in the online FICS. Now uh, once the NOC or the report has been updated, whether it is a rejection or a non-conformance report, the message or the information regarding that will be again transmitted back to the uh, a, uh, authorized officers bin in FICS and the authorized officer will be able to view the N, uh, NOC or the NCC that has been uh, generated, auto-generated based on the laboratory report. This is how uh, the no objection certificate, the online no objection certificate that is generated in the FICS looks like. This will have the information regarding the uh, uh, unique, the NOC number, the online generated uh, no objection certificate number, the uh, details regarding the product for which that particular report has been issued, that is the product, the sample ID, this is a sample ID, uh, you are, which has been generated in online FICS and sample ID for which the lab has issued the report. Then the basic consignment details are also as available in the FICS application will also be uh, visible in the uh, NOC certificate like the name of the importer, the uh, bill of entry number for which the consignment uh, is ref referred to and the port location is also mentioned here. So this is the uh, based on the uh, the physical copy of the NOC, the online message would have already got transmitted to the uh, ICE gate of uh, uh, ICE gate from FICS, and the physical copy uh, physical copy is also generated based on this uh, NOC. Uh, the uh, further clearance by the customs is done. This is how the rejection report. Uh, uh, looks like the rejection report instead of an NOC will be having an NCC number or the non-conformance certificate number. The rest of the information and the reason for rejection, uh, the reason for rejection as recorded by the lab in online will also be visible in the rejection report. The reason uh, on which parameter the lab has uh, found that the sample is not conforming will come in the remark or the opinion as given as recorded by the lab in the online FICS. Now, uh, as we had said that there are, and you would have seen in the, pre, uh, in the uh, other sessions also that uh, there are specific cases where FSSA has given provision for issuance of provisional no objection certificates. There are certain cases of our consignments like for example consignments which have uh, shelf life less than 7 days or consignments which require special storage conditions like uh, chilled or frozen cold storage or even retail uh, pre-packed commodities. For these uh, con uh, uh, consignments, FSSA has given specific uh, uh, provisions for issuance of uh, provisional and no objection certificates and uh, the pro uh, generation of online uh, provisional uh, no objection certificate is also provided in the FICA system and once the inspection and sampling is completed, the authorized officer based on the uh, uh, re request of the uh, importer or CHA to issue a prov PN provisional NOC can generate an online uh, provisional in, uh, no objection certificate. And this also will carry a unique uh, in, uh, number the, uh, termed as a PNOC. Based on the provisional no objection certificate that has been issued by the authorized officer, the clearance can be take, uh, done by the customs for uh, or, or the requisite out of charge can be given. Uh, rejection reports that has been issued as 
uh, similar to the no objection certificates, the rejection reports uh, uh, is also visible in the AO log in the will be visible in the AO login, and uh, uh, the uh, AO will have a uh, consolidated uh, will be able to have a consolidated information on the details of that rejection report that has been issued not only based on the lab uh, uh, testing, but also the rejection report that has been issued by the authorized officer based on the visual inspection with those informations also, the consolidated informations are also recorded in the FICS. Now, uh, we also have, uh, as you know, we have a provision uh, for, that has been uh, given in the import regulation wherein in case a re rejection report has been issued by the laboratory, the now, notified laboratory for a particular consignment, importer can avail the provision of applying for a retest. Uh, the retest samples are, uh, uh, retesting of the samples is done in the referral laboratory. So, importer can avail the uh, uh, provision to uh, appeal against the first rejection report that has been issued by the notified laboratory. So, uh, option has been given in the online itself. This is also an online uh, provision where uh, the importer or CHA submit their request in the online for applying for retest. And once a re request for retest is re received, the authorized officer can will approve the retest request of the importer. And uh, the uh, this also involves a payment of uh, analysis charges. So, and uh, it will uh, the accepted applications are forwarded to the CHA or the importer for making of the pay requisite uh, payment analysis charges. And once the payment is made, uh, the second part of the sample that is uh, available with the authorized officer, the counter sample that is retained by the authorized officer will be forwarded to the referral labs for analysis. So the forwarding of the, lab the sample uh, ID is also done in the online. Forwarding of sample ID by the authorized officer to the referral lab is also uh, done in the online. The sample information is, uh, uh, is updated in the online system and the message regarding that particular retest sample is forwarded in the FIC system to the referral uh, to the uh, FIC has been of the referral lab. Then the physical sample is forwarded to the referral lab. The uh, referral lab also uh, uses the FICS uh, uh, portal to update the uh, test results and uh, the uh, test results are updated by the referral lab and based on the uh, uh, opinion given by the lab for that particular sample after uh, re-verification or re-analysis, uh, 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 no objection certificate or if uh, or a re rejection report will be generated in the on will uh, will uh, have to be generated. So the message regarding the uh, referral lab will update the test result in the online and update upload the test report in the online. And authorized officer will verify the test report and based on the opinion given by the lab will generate the no objection certificate or the rejection certificate. I think this completes the uh, overview of the. Uh, food import clearance system, the online, port, online uh, portal that has been developed by FSSA for the food import clearance process of, uh, of the authorized officers.